period. Hi, good morning. How are you today? I'm doing okay. I'm yeah. feeling just a lot of sadness lately and just stress and so I'm okay, but it's been it's been hard. Let's see, Sarah, I seen you what a week ago and we kindly we kind of just touched base briefly on um on your situation and I know that you were feeling um some guilt and a little bit of uh you know some anxious feelings. So would you like to, to talk about it a little more today and, and let's see? Sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely I think it will help to I need to just process what I'm feeling is it's been a lot. So um, my parents are um, aging and they both have a lot of health problems. My mom is legally blind, but super independent and skilled at managing in her home, getting a along. Um, her and my dad have been able to coexist with their health problems for a long time with a little support from me and my siblings. Um, but my dad's health is rapidly declining and he's fallen a few times. And so as siblings, we've got together and just feel like it's time that they're not safe in their home. Um, because when my dad was a little healthier, he was able to help my mom. You know, she's super independent and can function. He's able to help her. But um, since he's fallen and his health is deteriorating, it's just he's not able to be the support that she needs. And we just constantly worry about both of their safety. And so we had a little family meeting and feel like it's time to look at assisted living. And so my sister took my mom to see a few places and she's more resistant than my dad. My dad's like, yeah, I, I need help. Let's do it. Or my mom's like, I don't want to give up my independence. So it's been hard watching them kind of grapple with it and have different feelings about it. Um, and just a lot of sadness that I know they're, you know, life is, is short. They're based on their current health. I just don't know how much longer they're going to be with us. So there's that grief about, you know, processing their, they're not going to be with us always. And, but also just like the stress of taking them out of their home when I know that's not, even though my dad's like, yeah, I'm ready for it. It's hard. So that's where I'm at emotionally, just watching this unfold, trying to manage my own emotions, but then be a support to them as they go through this. I definitely see that this is, this is definitely bothering you. Um, it's nice that they've been so independent for such a long time. That's, that's really great for them, you know, and, and, and it's, and it's difficult when we start getting into this, this age group, um, for ourselves that we have to start realizing that our parents are aging and, and, and it is hard, but, um, I can, I can tell that you love them very much and, and that you want them to be safe. So yeah. How is it with your siblings? How many siblings do you have? So there's four of us. I'm okay. second out of four. So my older sister's kind of taking charge. She's the one that took them, took my mom to check out some care centers. So she's kind of taken on that, <clears throat> that role. And I feel like I don't, it's hard to knowing, like, I feel like I don't want to overwhelm them. So I want to be involved. But I feel like it's not good for all of us to go check out the care centers together. <laughs> it's a little intense. So, you know, there's Certainly something you could do after she goes, right. you know, maybe and <laughs> you could sneak in, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that actually, you, you know, maybe we could go as siblings together and check it out without my parents. Maybe that's something we could do. Yeah, definitely. Just so that you can see and. And if I remember correctly, do your parents live close to you or is it another sibling that they live near? We all live pretty close to each other. You know, we all live with oh, Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, and we're planning on moving them to a care center that we can access. Good. Quickly. But yeah, it's just, it, you know, it would be nice 
if one of us could take them into our home or one of us could go live with them, but it's just, we all still have kids at home and, and jobs. And so I just don't think any of us, even though we're able to help support them, it would be a totally different situation to have to bring them into our home with teenagers and busy schedules. So wanting to support them, but just feeling like we don't have the tools to bring you into our home or one of us to go live with you so you can keep your independence in your home. So one is feeling like they'll be, and, and I think just, especially with my dad's health, what the care he needs is beyond like he needs nursing care. You know, I'm not a nurse. My siblings aren't medical providers. So that he, they need that. He's especially him. He needs that medical assistant. So feeling like this is what they need but it still brings up a little bit of guilt like oh i wish i had the capability to you know bring them into my home or live with them or something you know but it's putting it i don't know even though i think things have changed it's Still, I think there's just always these underlying feelings of putting your parents in a care center is cruel. Even though it's not, like I know logically it's not, there's just still this underlying piece is that putting your, you know, putting someone away in a care center, there's just this, it feels cruel and then there's this sadness to it. to think about kind of like more of the positives of putting them in a care facility um because i know you expressed your concern they're getting older your dad's health is declining mom's legally blind them living alone without anybody there's, there's a high risk right yeah we constantly worry about one or both of them falling and being injured seriously injured yeah so with them being in in a care facility they will they have 24-hour care then or somebody's there all the time right right yes somebody they can just push a button anytime they need care so well, does that bring you a little bit more of like peace of mind i mean knowing that that somebody is there somebody can care for them somebody can contact you guys right away if something does go wrong right yeah, absolutely yeah i think that's those kind of things are motivating us to make yeah. this change even though it's so hard yeah. yeah and it sounds like you have a lot of support from your siblings considering that there's there's four of you mm -hmm. um, that's nice. That's nice. Any other type of support or um, things that you guys do that could, you know, help you with the decision process? I mean, do you know anybody else that has, um, you know, needed to put their family in, in this type of facility or um, any recommendations from people that you may know, you know, sometimes that helps just like community wise, like knowing like, oh, well, you're, you know, you had to put your family in there. That gives me hope that, you know, they did well. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, um, they didn't, my sister did mention when they took a tour of it, I don't know anyone. I, you know, a lot of my friends are in the same situation where we're getting older. So our parents are getting older. And I think it's on, you know, some of my friends' minds, but no one's in the exact same situation. But my sister did say they do have, um, support groups for children of their residents. Um, and then they do also have like opportunities for family activities where they provide community events and families are welcome to attend. So that sounds nice. Yeah. That's one reason I think we're leaning towards this care center that we took my mom to see. And I think, you know, another positive that's motivating us to make this decision is um, my mom's very social, but um, she needs help being social. And my dad hasn't been able to provide that. And he is not a social. Um, so I think there's opportunities for her to get some social interaction she hasn't had for a while. Um, but she's kind of resistant 
she thinks she prefers being independent in her own home versus the opportunities there. So I think when she makes the transition, I can see her settling into it. But right now she's kind of resisting. But it, it is a positive. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's new, right? It's it's a new idea. It's something fresh and mm-hmm. and um, you know maybe letting her visit a few more places and and uh, you know just all of the family talking about it that could be helpful and just and you know just that slow transition process. You know it's hard for any of us to make decisions like that. It's hard to think that we're putting our parents, you know, somewhere else for someone else to take care of. But, um, you know, I, I see where, where you're coming from, where you all have families and teenage children and, Mm -hmm. and it's hard, you know, that that would probably make them uncomfortable too, you know, to, to be in your home. Right. So at least they're still having a little bit of that independence, you know, they get to mingle with people of the same age. And like you said, your mom gets to go out and be social. And, um, so those are, those are great great you know things to look at and look at when you look at the big picture you know yeah yeah Yeah. i think um i think it's definitely a difficult choice but i think you guys are on the right track i mean you definitely mentioned some positive points in there um but overall i mean how are you feeling? I know, you know, we didn't get to talk for a long period of time, but um, just being able to look at some of the positive and the negatives, you know, how do, how, how are you feeling overall? Um, it's good to talk about it. I think sometimes keeping it in my head, stuck in my head with my own thoughts makes me focus on the guilt and the concern or the sadness, but being able to talk about it is helpful and I think it would be, I think your suggestion to sit down with all my siblings and have some more conversations or maybe with my parents as well might be helpful because it does help to talk about it and focus on the reasons why we're doing this and the things they have to, that we all have to gain from making this decision. It's nice that you guys are going to still be close because you can offer that support and they're going to be glad when you come to groups and, Mm -hmm. and come and, you know, play games or visits and things like that. You know, you're, you're still going to be around. Yeah. Just having that extra supervision, you know? Yeah. 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 So it is helpful to focus on the positives and what's motivating us and um, just being patient with the grieving, like, I, it's hard not to let my mind jump to the time when they're not going to be with us. So I think trying to stay in the here and now is helpful and to stay in the present. Yes. Yes. Definitely work on staying in the present. I mean, you're going to be consumed with, with the move or making that transition for them. And, and you just, you know, you enjoy every day and, and being with them beautiful yeah yeah so i'm grateful that they can still be close yeah it's just going to be different but and it's our childhood home i think we have to go through a little grieving process of not being able to go to their house won't be this visiting grandma and grandpa won't be the same you know visiting mom and dad won't be the same yeah that's will be that'll be definitely a transition for each one of your siblings and all of the kids involved mm-hmm. yeah. yeah part of the process there yeah but um it'll just be new and like you said they they hold events and things like that for you guys to come and you know it'll just be um a new transition just a new new way of doing things and somebody else's house will be the new meeting place right Right. that's true yeah i've seen other friends go through that too where um their parents have downsized and so they use one of their homes instead of going to grandma grandpa's house grandma grandpa come to someone else's house that's i've seen friends go through that too 
I know we mentioned last time, um, you know, that you guys uh, go to church regularly. Um, will they still be close to church and will they be able to get there and things like that? Um, so we could like go pick them up and take them to church with us if we wanted to, but they do provide a few different um, church services at the care center that they can choose from. They're modified and shortened from what they would get out in the community, but they still, they could choose. So that's a conversation we could have with them and see if what they prefer. And if they wanted to come with that church with us, that would be a fun opportunity because we don't currently attend the same church building together but so that oh, you don't okay but, okay yeah i know you had just mentioned last time that you guys you know everyone goes to church and that's something that you do all the time i just didn't realize that you you guys don't go together so so they'll still have the opportunity then yeah. and they offer those services oh that's great yeah it sounds like a wonderful place yeah i think care centers have improved a lot i have to remind myself that um care centers aren't what they used to be. I think they are, have improved a lot. Um, thinking of um, my grandparents, I had a grandmother go into a care center and I did not like going there. So maybe that's part of it. I have this negative association, but I think the care center my grandmother moved into is not the care center my parents are going to be moving into. It'd be a good idea to go visit. Yeah. Before they make that move yeah so you can get that out of your mind yeah <laughs> so you don't make that association any longer right okay. yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah well um i i you know from the start of our our conversation i could i could tell you were um very stressed and you know you were you were pretty sad um do you have anything that you do for yourself? Any hobbies or any type of coping skills? Anything that you could do when these things start coming up and you start getting concerned or? <clears throat> um, yeah, that's a good. So I, I like journaling and I was thinking about, you know, something that maybe we could do, whether I do it on my own or with my siblings is um, I could, you know, do my own journaling, but maybe collecting story, you know, working on my parents' life story, um, collecting stories and pictures and things like that, putting some, a scrapbook or something together in addition to doing some of my own journaling to process this change um, and record memories of them to reflect on later. So that's a thought I had that I think would be helpful. That's amazing. That is very creative. Yeah, I think it would be good for all of us. Good for me, but then good for my parents and my siblings too, I think. Might help with the transition, especially the grief. Um, knowing like their time with us is probably short, so. Now's the time I feel like to do that before I don't have an opportunity to do that. Yeah. I'm glad you do have the time right now and definitely take advantage of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been a wonderful spending time with you today and I hope you're feeling a little bit better. Um, and then if you'd like, you know, we can meet up again next week and we'll just kind of see where things are at and, and give you someone else to talk to outside of the family. <laughs> Thank you. That sounds good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.